Okay, here's one you don't see every day. A Tram D201 hardwired. Also sometimes called the Red Diamond. Um, if you see the nameplate here, even though it's partially worn off, uh, let's see if I can find the pointer. Even though it's partially worn off, right here is a um, what's left of a, a red emblem, and it's a diamond shape. And they used to call these um, radios Tram Diamond D201s, and some even had diamond in the nameplate. But not all the time. But usually, if it's got that red uh, diamond-shaped symbol in it, it's a hardwired. But sometimes, you know, people play around with the name plates and, and, and switch them or try to put a diamond, a red diamond on the name plate and pawn it off as a uh, hardwired, you know, red diamond D201. But there is a way to tell for sure. The first version hardwired D201s for these knobs here, it has Vox and Vox Delay. Vox is voice activated king. So... If we uh, turn that circuit on and, uh, you know, adjusted it right, we talk into the mic. The mic would pick up that, you know, somebody's talking and would automatically key the, uh, the radio. That's voice activated key and it would key the radio with your voice. But that's a feature that didn't go too well. So when they um, got finished with the hardwired um, um, radios and went to the PCB versions, they got rid of the Vox and up here is you got the uh, mic gain and tone control dual knob over here and what they did for all the generations after the hardwired is they moved the mic gain and transmit tone control it's got like an equalizer for the transmit for these radios that's what TTC or transmit tone control stands for but they moved them two dual knobs over here to where the Vox were and they got rid of the Vox and in the place over here of these two they put a single knob and it was a uh, adjustable noise blanker if you see on this radio you got a limiter over here and I'm not sure I think these did have a blanker in them some did some did not um, but the limiter switch on these original ones if it had a blanker in it it would turn on the automatic noise limiter and the blanker at the same time but the next generations they had a blanker over here and uh, it was variable so that's the difference you can physically see you know on the outside is the hard wire has the Vox and the mic gain tone control is over here and you know, most have the red diamond, but don't be fooled like that. All red diamonds aren't the same. Again, people play it with the face plate. So I'm going to turn it. We got the uh, bottom open. And it's also sometimes called the rat's nets. And I guess you can see why. This is, you know, the bottom one. This was a pretty good one. You know, some that look a, uh, a little worse. You know, it looks worse of a rat's nuts under there so it's point to point hand wiring at the factory it was people on an assembly line and they would put in every part you know they would hand wire it point to point or part to part so that's why it was called a hand wired or hard wired sometimes people use that term same definition that somebody physically, you know, had to labor and put in each of those individual components individually. You know, a person had to do that. I know Johnson radios, they came in, Johnson, um, well, not radios, but transmitters. They came in kit form where you would put it together yourself, some of them, and some of them were factory hand-wired. Same thing, somebody at the factory would go point to point, part to part, and put that together. So... You can imagine the labor involved in that. You know, it's not a machine, not an assembly line. It's a person doing that wiring and point-to-point -point parts in there. So that's the hand-wired. And this is the best version because all the major components, well, not the, all of them, but the uh, most the uh, components, the resistors and capacitors and all that are hardwired 
to this steel chassis, you know, in terminal strips under here, under the bottom. Kind of, you know, relatively cool, you know, not next to the tubes. And the tubes are not mounted on circuit board. They are mounted directly to the steel chassis. Um, let me zoom in a little bit because this radio is live. That's uh, the tube is mounted to the uh, chassis. You know, one of them. Um, let's see if we can get the camera right. There it is. That's the big audio tube. You know, again, mounted to the uh, steel chassis and point-to-point -point wiring. I should have brought up another tram, but I've done it enough in the past where on the uh, all the next versions, they use a lot of circuit boards in them. And most of the tubes were mounted to circuit boards and the, the parts were mounted on top of the circuit boards next to the tubes. There are, you know, a couple problems with that. You know, the tubes is where on this top side, I'm just turning it around. I can feel the heat from this thing. The tubes is where all the heat is. And when you put uh, components on a circuit board like that and put it next to a tube that's mounted on a circuit board, you got some um, heat problems and circuit board overheating and sweltering and moving and jumping and uh, the cold solder joints or hot solder joints. Um, you got all kind of problems because you took this design and you took it and mounted the um, components up top on circuit boards and mounted it right next to the tubes you know it just just wasn't a good idea so anyway because of that this version here the hardwired version with the steel chassis except for the balance modulator board um, is considered the best version and the most desirable even though it's 23 channel um, you know the later D201's were also 23 channel with the circuit board and then the D201A was also circuit board but it was 40 channel people do desire the A sometimes um, because it's 40 channel and this one's you know the original one was 23 but for most people this is the desired uh, radio as, as for tram D201's to have the hardwire one and this board right here I'm zooming into let's turn it that way that's the noise blanker board the very early versions of this radio did not have a noise blanker at all. It just had the noise limiter. And then, you know, as the band got crowded and noisy and all that, they decided they needed the noise blanker, you know, to the Tram D201 hardwired. So it was kind of an add-on. Um, you know, you can see the other boards are, you know, that board there. Yeah, come on, camera. That's a IF filter board. It's kind of mounted to the chassis. That one's raised and it's on um, standoffs because that was an add-on. Uh, that's the noise blanker board. And not all of them have that board. If it doesn't have the board, that just means it doesn't have that noise blanker in it. Uh, the, the noise blanker was an add-on for this radio. Everything else is, um, you know, factory and came with the radio. The big bad... Uh, 6L6 transmitter tube, uh, big bad. That's also a 6L6, just a newer version for the audio tube. Put a big bad new audio tube in this one, and um, again, most of the components, you know, except the you know small components, there are under the chassis, away from the uh, heat and the circuit boards. Um, a lot of people say that tram use chintzier parts on the later circuit board ones because you know they failed so m much more often than this one and what I found is they use the same parts pretty much you know except for the Vox circuitry it's almost the same you know radio if say they mounted the components again on per on circuit boards and on top and on top next to the tubes you got resistors and capacitors mounted next to them hot tubes and the heat is what kills those components. It's the same components except that uh, components resistors are derated watts wise when it comes to you know heat. The higher the temperature environment they're in the less watts they'll carry. So you took a you know a, a resistor mounted on the bottom on this radio and it's fine but you put it on top next to heat and it's probably the rating is half. So that's what happened with the um, Tram D201 circuit boards also. Uh, easy and quick fixes to put a fan on it.
or two. But don't cut off the radio to put a fan on it. There are, you know, better ways to do that. Anyway, I've done enough talking. It wasn't anybody on the band or else I was going to fire up this radio, Big Bad Radio. And I was going to put in this um, RMI 100 modulator just to uh, inflame the hams and mess with folks. But, you know, it wasn't anybody out there. So I'm on a dummy load. It should be warmed up, ready to go. That's not on. So we're on the 20 watt scale over here. And we're going to key it up. And it's dead key in 3 watts. Um, if we picked it up and took that in line, it'll do just under 4. But we put the um, modulator in line and we didn't re peak it. So um, I'll do about 2 and 3 quarter. And it's on average. Hello, 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 hello. Audio. Talking about seven on average. <whistles> Whistling to nine. Now, some tube radios, they barely don't want to swing at all. So, that's great swing. Also, this radio, somebody put in this big, ugly switch back there. Not me. This is customers, not mine. One of the last I'm ever going to do. Um... As far as customer, other couplers, I got enough of my own to do. Put it on high, and it keys about five and a half. If I repeaked it and took that out, it actually would do about seven. Still good forward swing um, on average. And last, we gonna put it back on the regular side and put it on peak, even though it doesn't do that much more on peak than it does on average. Audio, audio. Well, actually, it is swinging pretty darn good. Hello, hello. Audio, audio. Audio. Talking about 14 and a half. Might hit 15. And then on the high side on peak. Audio, audio. Audio, audio. 20 watts. This tram is uh, working good and doing what it's supposed to do. Been recapped and... Uh, the blue resistors are um, 3 watt, replacing some of the bad 2 watt resistors in there. Some people replace, um, you know, all the resistors and everything. I do it by case by case. This radio, you know, looks pretty good. And the um, most of the resistors and capacitors, not electrolytic, I replace all of them. But the um, papers and the other ones, um, if they're reading good and testing good and they haven't been um, hit by too much heat, you know, people leaving them on for 24 hours for a year or two and expect them to keep on trucking. It don't work like that. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it for this um, hardwired D201. Okay, that's it for this one. I'm going to wrap it up and uh, tell the customer to come get it. One of the last I'm going to do. I got a couple more in line and finishing them up. And that's going to be it. Then it's just going to be strictly working on my own. All right. Bye.